Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabansi. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic, the base, entertainment, and when we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and now we see them. And today, we got a hell of a show for you guys. Uh, but before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe uh, to the channel. And before we get into the show here, uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, my name is Charles Tabansi, handle C-T-A-B-A-N-Z. You can follow me if you want to. Make sure you follow Dreamers Pro as well, and also check out our podcast that we have pinned in the comment section below now as you guys know the nba season is starting today and with the start of the nba season it means that we're gonna have a lot of hate coming from skip bayless towards russell westbrook now for those of you who have been following the nba for the last two seasons you guys will know that skip bayless turned russell westbrook into his personal pinata over the last two years he was smacking russell russell westbrook up and down the corridors of the, of the media world every single opportunity he had. It was absolutely ridiculous to the point where even Russell Westbrook's wife was like, yo, hold up. Can, 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 can we take a break, please? Can, can we pause? Well, as you guys know, Russell Westbrook now finds himself uh, being a, a clipper, and he joined the team last year, obviously, uh, at the trade deadline via buyout from the Utah Jazz, and, 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 and the Clippers picked him up. You saw how he was able to help that team uh, in the first round help and help Kawhi Leonard uh, get that victory in game one against the Suns, even though the Clippers are a very shorthanded team. But Rushbrook showed he could do some things, I think, in game. I think it was in game. No, Kawhi played in game two. So I think it was in game three. Westbrook scored 37 points, if I'm not mistaken, in that game. So, you know, at the end of the season, a lot of the Clippers guys were excited to you know, the possibility of bringing Russell Westbrook back. But some of them were... Um, unsure of whether or not they were going to be going to be able to bring him back because due to people like Skip Bayless and others, uh, he didn't get his his market value shrunk, you know, when he only got offered a two year, seven million dollar deal. But it's, it's also worth noting that Russell Westbrook is doing very well uh, for himself off uh, the court. But anyway, he's going to be coming back for his second year uh, this year. So this morning I tuned in to Undisputed and I was watching some of the segments there and I noticed that they had Rachel Nichols and Paul Pierce on the show. And as you guys know, whenever Skip Bayless is discussing anything remotely related to Russell Westbrook, he is going to find a way to take a shot at Russell Westbrook and, and start flaming him. But I believe to his surprise today, what ended up happening was after he tried to diss Russell Westbrook, Rachel Nichols and Paul Pierce essentially shut him down on his own show. I want to give you guys a quick back backdrop. So what they were referring to was Yesterday, Russell Westbrook was talking to the media, right? And they asked him. It wasn't like as if he came up there and started talking himself. They were like, Russ, what are your expectations for yourself this season? And he was responding to that question. And then somehow Skip Bayless caught a whiff of those comments and then took it to a totally different realm. So that's where he went. But, as you know, so as Skip was talking, it was very refreshing to see Paul Pierce and Rachel Nichols say, no, Skip, like, I don't agree with what you're saying, and I don't even see where all of this is coming from. So for those of you who didn't see that exchange, I want to play it for you now, and then we're going to come back and continue on the show. Take a listen to that exchange there. Go, go ask go, Russ is Rachel. more humble, though, but now I'm saying, like, how do you put the ball in James Harden's hand and take it out of Kawhi and Paul George's hand? Yeah. How do you do that? They're not going to sit around and watch the James Harden show. No. He's going to have to come in and fill in a role. And we're not going to sit here and watch him ISO at the top, run, pick, and roll, and wait in the corner on the ball. This is Kawhi's team. This is Paul George's team. But he didn't do that last season in Philadelphia. He was able to play more of that team game. And I have faith in Ty Lu. I mean, that's your guy. Don't you think that if anyone can manage those personalities it's Ty. I don't know if anybody can manage James Harden's uh, attitude because the last three franchises we've seen him with he's crippled these franchises I mean, look at what happened in Houston they're rebuilding same thing in Brooklyn and we're going to see a rebuild real soon in Philadelphia because if Embiid is not happy mm, in the next year or two he's going to be out of there and this is the James Harden effect that we're seeing everywhere he goes let him go to the Clippers, and the same thing is going to happen there in a couple years. Yeah. So you heard the exchange there. Now, hear my thoughts. First of all, as I was watching Paul Pierce today, I really enjoyed him on this show. Now, this is not the first time I've seen Paul Pierce on television. Obviously, he was on, uh, used to make appearances on ESPN. But I love the fact that he was given a level of freedom to really say what he thinks. I also enjoy the fact that he was able to push back on Skip, and I love that they were able to stop Skip right in his tracks. Russell Westbrook does not want to come back this year and score 21 points per game 
and average a triple double. I don't see that. I don't see that being his goal. I think if Westbrook scores, and this is just me, I think if he scores between 10 to 14 points per game, he's getting you between seven to eight assists per game, seven rebounds a game. I believe Russell Westbrook will view that as a, as a successful campaign. And I'll tell you why. Because Westbrook doesn't have anything else to prove. Russell Westbrook is already going to the Hall of Fame. Russell Westbrook has already averaged a triple-double, what, three times? Russell Westbrook already won a, a regular season MVP. Russell Westbrook has already, I believe, led the league in scoring. Russell Westbrook has already made multiple all-star teams. Most, Russell Westbrook has already made multiple all-NBA teams. So it's not like as if he has to come out here and prove anything. That's the reason why you hear a lot of players push back on some of these idiotic polls or rankings that come out where they have West, Westbrook ranked so, uh, so low. They're like, you dudes clearly don't understand a damn thing about basketball. Clearly. Now, there's a big contingent of sports fans that don't that don't think for themselves. What happens is you have these people on television that say something and then they just follow. And it's not just on television. It's even in, in uh, independent media. All, all it takes is a person with a name to say something. And you can almost you can almost be rest assured that the sheep are going to be bursting through the door. Yeah, he, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I'm like, bro, hold on. Are y'all think are we thinking? Are we thinking right now? Are we thinking? Like, <laughs> what happened to the ability to process information? You're gonna accept anything that people say. So there, there's that contingent out there. But most know that Russell Westbrook is not as bad as those rankings were making them seem. So to me, Westbrook has nothing to prove in the NBA players that will back that support that notion. The other thing is, I believe Russell Westbrook wants to win. I don't think he's looking at this Clipper situation as, oh, I need to come out here and show the world what I can do. Who gives a damn? The only thing Westbrook needs to show the world how to do is the same thing Paul uh, Paul George needs to show the world how to do. It's like, how are we going to win a championship? I think that's what Russell Westbrook is after. Not showing to some dude somewhere that, oh, I can average 20. Who cares? He's already done it. Number one. Number two, how is he even going to be able to average 20 points per game? How many shots is he, going to, is he going to be able to take with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard on the team? They're going to take at least, what, 17, 18 shots per game. You're going to be getting around 40 shots just from those two guys. So how many shots do you think Westbrook is going to be getting? 20 shots a game? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So I don't think that's Russell Westbrook's disposition whatsoever. And I'm happy that Rachel Nichols pointed that out. Like, Skip, you wilding right now. But that's what Skip does. Skip will look for any reason to throw us a Westbrook on, uh, you know, under the uh, uh, <laughs> under the bus. So to me, I'm very happy uh, that Rachel Nichols pushed back on that. So what I want to know from you guys is what do you think about that exchange? Number one and number two, how do you think Russell Westbrook will fare this season? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts in the comment section and we catch you on the next show. Peace.